Now, this next topic comes to us from Eric Brunhammer via the Facebook group because he woke up the other day to a bunch of copyright claims uh, on his channel from Linus Tech Tips, and he was not happy about that, and it looks like he was not alone here, as you can see from a post he made later in that day. And of course, this generated the amount of drama you would expect it would. Uh, so Zip Zeolock here has a bit of a summation about what his take on the whole situation was in regards to how these claims got dished out. Because basically what happens here is that if you are a small channel, uh, you don't have access to the content ID system that larger channels do. And this is something that runs within YouTube. It's kind of outside of the DMCA in that it is governed by YouTube's terms of service. So they have their own separate process for this. Uh, so if I decide that I'm going to issue a copyright claim against you and you dispute it, uh, YouTube here is the arbiter. If I were to file a takedown request against you, not a content ID request, uh, then the uh, dispute resolution takes place in court. There's a big difference here, and to some degree, the content ID is a lot more efficient in that manner. Uh, what Content ID does is that if you have access to it as a creator, it takes a fingerprint of every video that you upload. And when it notices somebody else uploading a video that contains the same fingerprint as what you uploaded, it lets you as the content creator know that it's there and you have the option to take some uh, steps to protect your work. And what's nice about Content ID is that it goes beyond just takedowns. Uh, you have some additional options available to you. So for example, I could decide, you know what, I'm not going to take your video down but I just want to track it. And when you select track as a content ID holder, uh, that means that uh, I can just get the analytics from your video and your video can stay in place. You can continue to monetize it. Uh, everything is fine. In fact, you might have received one of these notices over the years where it says you don't have to do anything, nothing's going to happen, uh, and you're fine. And usually when you get one of those uh, notices that doesn't say much, it really means that the content holder is just keeping an eye on the analytics of your video. Now the other option, and I think this is what Linus Tech Tips had on by default, is to have the video monetized. And what this means is that your video stays up, but I as the copyright holder will earn all the revenue from that video. That's something that you have the right to do as a content ID participant. You gotta make sure that the content you're claiming is your own, which we'll get to in a minute here, because in this case, that wasn't necessarily the case in every instance, but it is a way to uh, I think actually allow some creativity here because uh, back in the early days of YouTube, a lot of people were doing these lip syncs and funny things to copyrighted songs. And the law at that point said, take down the video if you want to protect your uh, copyright holdings. Content ID gives some more flexibility to allow fans to do things with copyrighted content uh, should the owner of that content be okay with it. And the exchange sometimes is, okay, we'll let you leave the video up and build your profile, but we're going to monetize the video. So that's the other option that you can pursue, and that's what most, uh, I think most channels do. Now the third option is something called block. And what this means is that your video is not going to be taken down, uh, but you won't be able to have anyone watch it. So it's not quite a takedown, uh, but it's something that prevents the video from being displayed uh, anywhere on YouTube if the content holder decides to do a block. Now with Content ID, the impact to your channel is relatively minimal uh, insofar as that these things do not issue strikes against you. So if I do a DMCA takedown of three of your videos, that is three immediate copyright strikes and you're off the platform. That's a pretty significant punishment. With Content ID, uh, there are no strikes issued, but you do have to deal with the consequences of having your video monetized, for example, or maybe blocked off the platform altogether. Now, if you decide that my claim is not valid, you can issue a dispute. And the first step is that the dispute goes to the person who issued the Content ID claim. So if I had some you know, stock footage that I'm claiming is my own and you know that it is uh, not my right to do that, you can dispute that with me. I've got 30 days to respond and I can decide, okay, you know what, you're right, I'm gonna release the claim and you get your monetization back. The nice thing about YouTube now is that they hold the revenue earned during the dispute period in escrow, which means that the video will accrue its revenue and then whoever wins the dispute essentially gets access to the accrued revenue and the revenue moving forward. It used to be that the other owner would get access to that money immediately and you would never see it back even if you were successful. And I had a few claims in the past that were held for the full 30 days and the other side never responded. So it can be a pretty long and scary period of time 
uh, especially if you're losing money as a result of that. But the good news is if you're successful, you get the money uh, back that was earned during the dispute period. Now, if I dis answer your dispute and say, nope, that's mine, you can't have access to the revenue, you do have the right to file an appeal. And at that point, YouTube takes a look at it and decides whether or not you're in the right or not. And then if the other side isn't happy with that, then they can issue the takedown and you can keep going further through the court process. So it's not an, an end all here, but it is certainly better than having a lot of strikes issued against your channel. Uh, but because this kind of operates outside of the DMCA and the consequences on the copyright holders are not as severe for making false claims, there are a lot of false positives that happen out there. And I do think that in many cases, some of these larger channels have probably earned a lot of revenue based on some false claims that the other side never appealed and they probably should have. And that's been an ongoing issue that I've had with Content ID. Now, I think what happened in this situation, and Linus kind of alluded to this himself in his response video that he did the other day, is that all of these channels that were getting claims against them had some kind of benchmark running, like 3D Mark or something like that, that Linus also ran in his videos. And Content ID saw the same content, even though Linus doesn't own the 3D Mark imagery. Uh, they saw that in Linus's video. They then saw it on all these other videos. And then Content ID started issuing these automatic monetization claims against anyone who had that benchmark running in their video. And it's often hard to stop this because if they make an algorithmic change to content ID that improves its sensitivity, and all of a sudden all these videos start getting claimed, it just happens all at once and you can't stop it. And I think that's probably what occurred here. Now Linus doesn't appear to actually do this himself. It looks like his MCN full screen uh, does it on his behalf. And full screen, of course, has a lot of large creators under their umbrella, and they all live within the full screen's content ID window. So all these different channels that are under full screen's control have all of their content being matched to somebody at full screen who goes through all of it. And this is where I think uh, they should have done better, because if you claim a video as your own in content ID, you can also say, hey, portions of this video are not mine and I don't want you to match them. So what somebody at full screen should have done is they should have looked at these videos where there were things that Linus doesn't own and they should have marked those as exclusions, which you can do. Uh, and if you do that, then this doesn't happen. But it takes a little bit of time when those videos get uploaded to actually go through and do that. And I think for all the money that full screen takes from Linus, they could probably spend a little bit of time and not hurt his brand like they did here. Because had they done their homework and had they gone through and actually marked off sections of his video that shouldn't be claimed, none of this would have happened and he wouldn't have uh, this tarnish on his brand. And this is another reason why I don't like MCNs. They take a lot of money from you and provide really little service as a result. Linus could easily be doing this himself through uh, Content ID and not have to involve these folks, but they really did him wrong here. And I think they, uh, first of all, should apologize. And secondly, they really need to be focused on making sure that they're not claiming things that are not in their control. Because the thing that really gets me here is that the only time these monetization claims uh, get appealed is when you do dispute them. So if there are you know, thousands of channels that are getting hit with this and only a dozen or so, or maybe 10% actually go through the dispute process, uh, then they're going to be earning money off of people's videos that they have no right to be earning from. But because those folks didn't file an appeal or they just don't care, uh, it's going to result in not a huge windfall, I'm guessing, but still some uh, degree of revenue from full screen that I don't think they should be earning at all. So that's what this is all about. Um, so it really requires, I think, people who are in Content ID to be responsible about it and making sure that they do exclude sections of videos that uh, might result in a mass claim like, happen, like what happened here. Because this kind of runs automatically, and if you set up your parameters to say, claim all videos with X percent of my content in them, this runs amok, and it takes a lot of work to undo it all. And again, no one's going to do anything unless somebody actually files a dispute in this case. So I think it's important uh, for everyone to do that if you got a claim. Otherwise, they're going, they're going to be earning money off of you, and I don't think that is too cool at all. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Anuj Zaveri, 
and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.